freaking have him pour like in conclusion, you know, and uh, prop it up. It seems that Brunelleschi was all in one and that sort of trajectory and path of designer and engineer really propelled and it'll show evidence in next episode also with the devil in the white city and burnham and prude and how prude is really the construction and structural genius and burnham is that artistic eye and um seeing that balance and um this is one of the if not the first project of this magnitude i mean it's at the pearls fair and i have a few general thoughts and critiques of what they decided to design but also i kind of understand it but that's for um next time it really seems that brunelleschi had to do everything because he first off he couldn't trust anyone because they would just steal it and claim credit and then receive the, the real board because these series of competitions were also how he earns extra money you know because it was 20 florins 100 florins whatever i mean even the lantern where his his um um carpenter what you know was trying to to uh take away from him he ended up winning you know even that competition but the fact that he had to compete for every single thing whether it was the uh whether it was the you know the stone framing for the the design of the dome itself whether it was the lantern i mean he it seemed like at every turn he had to compete for something and you know so you know the students and i talked a lot about competitions and um you know the fact that you know this was really the 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 precedent for international competitions for you know this project and that project um you know it really all started with brunelleschi um in in the notoriety of the or the um the fact that the architect came into um uh, fruition as a as a, a true profession uh, mm -hmm. came about through Brunelleschi. So, you know, again, you know, these were the kinds of conversations that we had with with the students, and they were it was you know all a pretty interesting you know dialogue that we had with regard to you know future competitions, current competitions, you know how um, you know this company or that company would set a international competition and some, you know, firm or group or, uh, I mean, even if you look at Snohetta as an example, they, um, you know, entered an international competition for the Alexandria Museum. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing, so, you know, one of the, one of the guys is, uh, actually all three of the, um, or, the um, originating partners for Snowheda came from the University of Texas, mm -hmm. and um, and you know one of them is a Texas boy, and you know the other two were you know were from international um, upbringings, but the fact that they entered this competition, they ended up winning it, and they called themselves Snowheda because it was um, a mountain near you know one of the one, where one of the partners was born and so they show up at uh in alexandria to you know receive the award and to you know start the actual design of the building and uh you know they're they're received at the airport and they you know they say well you know we're here to pick up snowheda who who you know who is here you know, it was just the three guys that started the firm. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we've got, you know, like 15 people down, you know, back at our, you know, office and, you know, Norway and you know, we're fine. And, and 
and you know they didn't know what the fuck they were doing but mm -hmm. the idea that they had created something that was truly unique for the alexandria museum and they won an international competition from that they have propelled themselves to the international spotlight in, in the same way that bjork engels has uh, that? uh and and so that is a way of uh you know truly distinguishing yourselves um in in architecture is to win an international competition like that uh so it was really interesting to hear the story of how they came about the fact that they showed up to be picked up and they they asked them well how many people do you have in your office and they were you know they were counting on their fingers well you know we've got you know 15 you know 15 people back at our office but you know four of them are the ups guys that show up to deliver this package <laughs> um you know that was a way of them you know uh you know trying to legitimize what they've done but it, it doesn't mean that you know the creativity is limited to a single individual or you, that you can't carry out what you you've created and so you look at the competition that Brunelleschi did yes he was a certain he was an individual and most of the competitions that are done, done today are, are are accomplished by groups or e even small groups that's fine but that is a way to truly propel you into the international spotlight and had Snowheda not won the Alexandria Library competition they would be three guys from University of Texas that are you know doing garage editions today yeah so do you, you think that's still kind of the only way to hit that sort of notoriety from an international point of view absolutely i mean i think that if you want to put yourself on the international landscape try winning an international competition will absolutely put you there uh, and so if you want to start to compete with people like Rem Coolhouse and Big and, and others that are out there who are winning these works, winning an international competition that has some level of notoriety will put you on that landscape. So you've got to pull all the punches, go after a project like that and and win it. And once you do, then that starts to set you up for um, success on the international framework of projects. Because those sorts of open competitions seem like really the only way to get your stuff in front of people's eyes because a lot of these decision makers that are the clients, they're real busy doing other things like having the building built often isn't their only priority you know like they have other businesses or ventures or what have you and it seems through that open competition i mean like at my old firm it, it was like no we are not doing any paper projects at all no competitions whatsoever and i mean like on one hand that's very understandable especially in certain niches but especially if you're trying to do larger projects that you haven't done before like you aren't going to have an um uh, an, an invite to bid you know on any project that you've never even done before it seems still like the only way i mean like to, Today is a little different because you can get some social proof through social media, but still these decision makers aren't the ones really following you. You know, it's um, poor they're, the public. They're not following you on social media. They're looking at the end result. And so exactly. I really believe that if you want to be on the international landscape to win an international competition is, is certainly a way to to get there quickly. Um, otherwise, if you go out and start your own firm, you're going to be doing garage editions for the next 20 years of your life until you make that leap. Yeah, because it seems it's just so expensive to 
pulled and everyone wants to make sure you can do it especially at cost and and properly so they don't have to tear it down or sue you later or get sued you know um that's that's sort of barrier like you have to step up or take that leap and it seems like through all the studying i've done of past major projects a lot of them are you know these open competitions and they'll sift through all of them because they don't really want to turn anything down you know it i mean yeah i mean there are competitions that are out there for people who have done these kinds of projects before but there are as you said open competitions for people who really have inventive and creative ideas and that's the kind of competition that Snowheda did to win the Alexandria Library. Um, you know I had a buddy of mine 20 some odd years ago that entered a competition you know, it, again it was a library not that libraries are the competition you should enter but um, he and a couple of friends of his from Princeton entered the, the competition they ended up winning it and they wanted to you know e even though they were hired on by a much larger firm they were allowed to complete that competition and, and allowed to complete the design work associated with that but I don't think that they would have been hired on to the much larger firm without the fact that they won that pivotal competition exactly and, and so I think that you know being aware of those things that are out there from an international basis and and if you listen if you if you want to have your a firm of your own winning an international competition is not necessarily the uh, the mother load i mean but it is a means to an end to to certainly establish your practice and really start from there Otherwise, you are doing, you know, you again, you're going to spend 20 years doing garage editions, you know, for friends and, and family and other things um, without that. So that is a vehicle for you to really put your new firm, um, you know, on a national or international landscape. It, and it seems also that it's super advantageous to take those risks earlier on i mean obviously economic viability is crucial but i mean per in the day and age of people having multiple jobs and and you could for sure figure it out if you were actually invested and so it it seems like the adage of casting out as wide of a net as possible and just never really throwing puts out there and and early on uh, and especially early on to try and gain that notoriety because once you're all pretty in that t discussion of big or snowheda or morphosis or whomever and i d don't even know it if that real architecture is an ideal goal but they're also just people too it's not like there's some other insanely different human that only thinks the i mean it's it seems like there's a playing field out there as long as you don't limit all of the shots that you can potentially take I mean, Steve Jobs is is known for for his um, his comment that you know everybody in the room is not necessarily smarter than you are, um, and 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 so it, it's really projecting yourself in a role that you can take advantage of a, a, a situation or a competition or an, an event. Um, it, it doesn't mean that you're smarter than anybody else that competed for it, but 
the fact that you've competed for it and you've won um, puts you in, in the driver's seat to um, succeed in, in other areas. So if you truly want a practice of your own, that is an area, um, I mean, demonstrated by, you know, Gilberti and, and, and Brunelleschi, that is an area, if a competition is out there, go for it. And if you have the right answer and, and uh, you end up winning it, there are a whole host of firms and um, alliances that uh, we can look back on that have great success stories based on one kind of almost freak accident of them winning a, a competition, right? Exactly. And then that comes back to that crucial question where you're really trying to investigate is when you have that blank page and it's for something, especially a competition that's being judged by others, like do you go the full Keating parity route of finding everything out you can about the person who's judging you and then picking what they like? Or do you try and pretty study the case objectively and figure out what the best possible solution? Because a building is nothing more than solving a bunch of problems. I mean, shelter for one, but there's a bunch of program and economics and social. I mean, I, it all goes into any different type of building, just a certain different dynamics. Yeah, for, for me, it's not following what the what the um, crowd wants, but really following your heart, following your passion, following the things that you know you find truly inventive and original, and that's the thing that you know juries gravitate toward. I mean, I've I've sat on a lot of of um, of juries for uh, design awards and other kinds of things, and the the thing that appeals to me is the originality that comes out through uh, through the work and, and where you're trying to do something unique. And it, so it's not following the crowd. It's not doing, not necessarily that Richard Keating is all bad, but it's not following the Richard Keating route. It's really following the Howard Rourke route. And it's not trying to be you know, I'm all alone. I'm doing it by myself. I'm I'm going to be Brunelleschi, but it is uh, following your individual passions and you know creating something that's truly unique. And and also in very practical terms, it seems like knowing really where to stands your ground when things have to be cut because prices fluctuate or who really knows what and in that very difficulty of it being built can you really be Brunelleschi I am just really enjoying